Well, this is new. I didn't know you could spin this. I'm not sure if this is new or not, but I didn't know you could spin the car when the car was parked. Pretty cool. Hey everyone, today we're checking out the latest update from Tesla. Uh, it is update 2023.12.1. Uh, it is a 0.1 release, so you'd think there's not much here, but if you look at the release notes, there's actually a whole bunch of new features here. Things like text size, which people have been asking for for ages. You have this new search option in the menus, which is pretty good. Uh, points of interest improvements, speed assist. I'm not sure what this is. I think the camera's already detected the signs. Uh, maybe this includes highways now, not sure. There's also phone call controls. So now you can use the left scroll button to answer or decline calls. Uh, you can also use it to mute yourself as well, which is pretty good. Now, I think the one that people are most interested about is this scroll wheel customization. So now you have the option of long pressing on the left scroll wheel and a little menu shows up and then you can choose different actions, which we'll go into in more detail in a second. So the first thing you actually notice after you've updated is actually this gear chime thing. So when you put into drive or reverse or park, it plays a different tone, uh, to letting you know that, hey, you're now in drive or hey, you're now in reverse, which is actually pretty useful. All right, let's put the car into gear and hear what it sounds like. So that's drive. That's reverse. And that's park. Let's try neutral. And then finally, we have new voice recognition languages. So now there's British English, uh, which is fine. Uh, we don't speak that here in Australia. We need Australian English. So Tesla, if you're listening, Give us Australian English, please. All right, now let's dive into some of the features that I found most interesting. The first thing is the search button up here. So there's a lot of small features that I don't use very often and sometimes it's hard to find them. Uh, things like, you know, where the wiper service is. You know, there it is. If you search wiper, it'll give you all the wiper options right here. And you can actually toggle them straight from this page, which is really good. So the search is pretty self-explanatory. Let's dive straight into the most interesting feature, which is actually the scroll wheel function, which is here, it says new. So this menu lets you choose what is the default option when you long press on that left scroll wheel. So at the start it's set to none, but you can set it to temperature, fan, you know, a whole bunch of stuff here. But interestingly, there's no wiper control, which is strange. Um, but let's leave it on none for now and see what happens when we hold this left button down. So holding down the left scroll wheel brings up that menu. So at first it's set to none. You have temperature. We can go in there and then you can go up and down to change your temperature. And as you can see, as I scroll this, the temperature is changing uh, with the scroll wheel, which is pretty good. Uh, next, let's go back. We also have fan speed. So yes, you can go and toggle your fan speed high, medium and low. I'm going to keep it on medium. Brightness. So you can change your screen brightness here as well. So if we scroll up, the screen gets way bright. And then we can scroll back down again. Uh, and then we have save dash cam. So if you are driving, you can actually map this menu item to the left scroll wheel. So that whenever you hold down the left scroll wheel, it will save the dash cam. Uh, there's acceleration mode. So you can go in there, you can change it from chill to sport, but I always leave it on sport. Uh, and next we have camera. So if you choose this, it will bring up the camera like so. And go back and close the camera like that as well. So just to demonstrate again, uh, you can scroll up and down to close or open the camera. Uh, and there's defrost, so if you go there, it just turns it on straight away. And my fans are going crazy. Let's turn it off again. Okay. Dome lights, again, you can turn the dome lights on auto, on or off. Let's leave them on auto. And then open glove box, so if you press this, the glove box opens. So to exit out of the menu, just press to the left again, and then again to exit, and that's it. Now, remember, we just did open glove box. So if we bring the menu back up again, it opens the glove box immediately. So whatever you selected last becomes the default action of the left scroll wheel. So when you hold it down. Now, I personally don't like that behavior. You might like it. So for example, maybe you, you know, change the fan speed often or the temperature often, and you don't mind that that becomes the default action when you long press the scroll wheel. There is an option in the menus to set it so that it asks you every time, which is uh, kind of what I want. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, so in display, there is the scroll wheel function. As you can see, it's set temperature as the default right now. Uh, you can tick this box uh, and it'll ask you every time. So let's see what happens after I tick that box. So let's bring up that menu, long press the left scroll wheel, 
uh, the menu shows up. It does show the temperature menu item first, but it's not directly selected. So it allows you to easily scroll up and down in the menu without actually activating that option. So for, remember before uh, we had the open glove box selected, every time you long press that scroll wheel, it would open the glove box, which would be pretty annoying. So now if you open the glove box and then we exit out of the menu and then we long press again, it's, it's choosing open glove box as the first option, but it doesn't actually open the glove box, which I think is what I want. So I think this is the option I would keep it on. So we can't directly assign wiper functions to the scroll wheel, but what I discovered was if you activate the wiper, you can use the scroll wheel to select the wiper speed from the pop-up menu. Pretty good. So I think the second most interesting thing is actually the text size that we can toggle now. So by default, it's standard. If we flip it to large, let's see what happens. Uh, it will require a system restart. So let's go ahead and do that. So the screen here will reboot itself. A little glitch there, but let's see what happens when this thing reboots. All right, okay, so we are back. And yes, it is noticeably larger. Uh, the menu here, the font is quite a bit larger. Uh, let's get that menu back up again. So back to display here. Yeah, everything's slightly bigger. Maybe, you know, a couple of font sizes bigger, maybe two or three font sizes bigger than what it was before. So if larger font size is what you're after, hopefully this is large enough for you. Uh, it's not huge, but I don't think it would fit the text if it was too big. So I think this is a good balance of having a bit larger text, but also making sure the menus still work. So let's flip that back to standard because that's what I like. All right, so I think that's it for this video. I only deep dived into the things that I found interesting. Uh, if there's anything you want to know more about, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I hope this was useful and thanks for watching.